This Dollar Tree furniture makeover is done in collaboration with fellow miniaturist Whitney Labrie and is part of a larger project, which is a steampunk diorama. Whitney and I both did a Dollar Tree furniture makeover, so make sure you check out her video linked below. And next Thursday, we'll be releasing the steampunk diorama videos, which will feature our miniature tables. This was the humble beginning of my steampunk diorama, and I think the table is a bit too wide for the space, so I'm going to modify it so it has two drawers instead of three. I'm using my heat gun to soften the glue so I can disassemble the table. And this is my favorite way of disassembling miniature furniture. I won't be using these legs, but I will be using the rest of the pieces to put the table back together. I used my miter shears to cut off one of the drawers, and now I need to make the back piece and the bottom piece the same width as the drawer front. I have some cool plans for the tabletop, but first I'm removing the original knobs because they won't go with the industrial look I'm going for. These cheap wooden knobs usually come out really easily, but these were glued in nicely, so I used my X-Acto and emery board to finish the job. I have an assortment of wooden dowels from Walmart, and I'm making some pipe legs for this table using the medium size. I'm marking some overhang on either side of each of the pipe legs, and then cutting the tabletop to match the new drawer front and legs. Since I cut the ends off, now my ends are square, so I'm just going to use my emery board to give them a rounded look like the front of the table. Now the magic really begins. I am so happy with how this turns out. I'm giving the tabletop a leather look, and that starts with mixing one part PVA glue with one part water. This piece of brown paper bag from the grocery store will serve as the leather top. I'm crumpling the paper so it'll be more flexible and submerging it in the glue mixture. Wringing out the excess helps it dry faster and also gives it more character by creating more lines. I draped the piece of paper over the tabletop and trimmed some of the excess. And then I fold it in the sides so the paper will dry wrapped around the edges and it'll look more natural when I glue it later. You can let it air dry, but I used my hair dryer to speed it along. Now the paper is dry and I can glue it down. Fabri-Tac is quickly becoming one of my favorite glues and that's the glue I'm using whenever you see that clear bottle. This has a nice suede color right now, but I want mine to be darker, so I'm starting with a layer of matte Mod Podge to seal the paper. The Mod Podge alone makes it look darker, but to make it look like aged leather, I'm using a small amount of brown paint on a brush and scrubbing it onto the surface of the paper. The Mod Podge prevents the paper fibers from absorbing the paint, so it sits on the surface and creates a lot of varying shades and tones. It really highlights the high and low spots that were created by crumpling the paper. The leather top is finished, so now we're moving on to the legs. I'm using a simple technique to make my wooden dowels look like pipes. I'm cutting some pieces of cardstock to wrap around the dowel to make it look like pipe connectors or couplings. The paper is pretty stiff and rigid, so I'm wrapping it around the dowel I'll be gluing it to so it'll have some more flexibility and wrap more easily. To get the wrap started, it's best to glue the strip of paper on and let it dry. Once the paper has taken hold, you can wrap the paper around and add glue to hold it. Since I used such thick paper, I only needed to wrap it a couple times. I sealed it shut with some tacky glue and made four of these. Then I used the same technique to add some couplings to the bottom of the legs. Before I can finish my pipe legs, I need to assemble the table. I glued the drawer front on backwards so I can have a flat front. Instead of two drawers, my desk will have one drawer. 
so it turns out I didn't need to remove the knobs after all. The bottom of the desk is glued to the drawer. This little rectangle I'm holding is the original side of the table, and since the new legs are thicker than the original square legs, I had to trim these a little bit so they'll fit. To add some stability and more detail, I'm using a smaller dowel to create a pipe connecting the front and back legs. Then I added a pipe to the back of the desk. I used a spackle between the couplings to make the side pieces look like one piece of metal connecting the pipes. I want the table to look like it's made out of metal, so I'm using a thick bead of glue to make it look like welds on the front and the sides. I'm making the drawer that goes across the front with a piece of scrap cardstock. I have a little stash of simple drawer pulls and handles I designed in Tinkercad and printed on my 3D printer. In a recent video, I made a wardrobe closet out of a cell phone box and made very similar looking handles using a Q-tip. I always add a black or gray base coat when I'm using silver paint because my paint is pretty see-through. And I also painted this Bond chair. Once I saw the pieces together, I thought the desk was too tall. So I took a risk and cut the legs and sanded them and it was actually quite easy and I like the new height a lot better. I made these panels for the steampunk diorama out of paper and I think the brass tone matches the top too much so I'm going with a silver palette for the base of this desk. The black base coat gives the silver an old tarnished look. I'm almost dry brushing this silver paint on because I want to retain some of the black base coat. To add additional interest, I just used a little bit of copper paint and added it sparingly. I left some of the black base coat showing, but to add a little more shadow, I put a tiny bit of black paint on my brush and hit the joints. Now that the desk is all done, I need to turn my attention to the chair. I liked the idea of having a fancy chair with a simple industrial desk, but then when I saw it together, I wasn't so sure. I was hoping adding a paint job to the chair would change my mind, but I still didn't like how it looked. I decided to go a completely different direction and make an industrial looking stool to pair with the desk. To make the curved legs of the stool, I used a little bit of watered down glue to soften some q-tips so I can bend them. Once they dry, they'll hold this shape. After I trim the legs to size, I attach them at the top with some Fabri-Tac glue. I let the legs dry and cut a circle out of some wire to attach to the legs. I used super glue to attach the metal to the Q-tips. I used this wooden wagon wheel to make the seat. I bent the wheel so it'll have a slight curve and then I used some wood glue to cover the top and the bottom so it'll be smooth and strong. I let the wagon wheel dry overnight. I got these watch parts on Amazon for my steampunk build and I'll be using one of the pieces on the stool. I glued one of these brass grommets to the stool. Then I attached to this tiny watch part to make it look like the stool has a mechanism for raising and lowering the seat. In retrospect, I wish I had used a threaded screw for the top part of the seat so it would really look adjustable. The wood glue is dry and I'm painting my seat red. I want it to look like a tractor seat. The Q-tip base is too small for the center hole in the seat, so I used the wrapped paper technique to build it up. I'm adding little dabs of silver to make it look like the red paint has chipped away, revealing metal underneath. I'm adding a base of dark gray paint so the stool will have a different brighter silver color than the desk even though I'm using the same paint on both pieces. 
before I roll the beauty shots, I want to show you some items Whitney Labrie sent to me to use in my diorama. Make sure you tune in next Thursday to see both of our completed steampunk dioramas and check out Whitney's Dollar Tree build linked below in the description.